if you're mathematically challenged like me, you'll probably, well, you might find some of the questions just throw you a little bit. The good news is, though, is that none of the questions in the GCSE DT exam are actually that complicated. That doesn't mean that you won't find them hard, because I, I find some of them hard, but I think you can be sh rest assured there is no algebra, there's no calculus, like anything like that. It's basically all areas, shapes, lengths, percentages, um, graphs, and that's about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's jump into it. Um, I'm going to show you one which is simply calculating area, and they always put it in the context of a, of a product. So um, here they are asking us, they've got a lovely box that they've, uh, drawing of the box, and they are asking us to tell them what is the internal area. So on the inside of the box, what is that internal area? No, not volume, just the area. So the way that we would calculate that is as follows. Well, I mean, the good thing would be for you to have a go at this first, and then um, you see if you got the right answer. First thing, or the way I would go about doing this is, um, and, and for the record, you can doodle on diagrams as much as you want. In fact, they, they almost expect you to. So to obviously for area, the formula is um, width times length. So for the external area, we've got the 300s here, which is fine, but we need the internals. So, be able to, so to be able to get the area, we need to find out what is the internal length, lengths here. So let's call these x and y. We've got to find out what they are. In fact, we don't even need to because x, we have x1 and then x2 because they're the same dimension. OK, so how do we find out the internal length? We know we've got 300. We've got this little chappy here, 15 mil, and that's the thickness of the material. Now, the more observant members of you will notice that there's material on both sides, and it, we can assume it's the same thickness because they've not given a different dimension. So all we need to do is to take 300 millimeters and then subtract it by 15 times 2. So two lots of 15 will then give us that internal dimension. So I'm going to do that down here. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Step one, I'm going to do 15 times 2, which equals 30. Now, the good news is that gets you a mark. Two, we now need to subtract that from 300. So I'm going to take 300 minus 30 equals 270 millimeters. Now, if you want to um, be nice and neat and detailed, and just so you don't get confused, this is where I just write it on there. Guys, always use the units, please. Always write millimeters if, they're, if that's what they're asking for. OK, so we've got 270. Now we've got two marks so far. So step three is going to be to then calculate the area. So to do that, we are going to need to do 270 times 270. And that gives us quite a large number. So we get 72,900 millimeters squared, like that. Now, you have to put the unit there to get all of the marks. Some people lose marks because they didn't put um, the square on there. So that's obviously the unit of area. Um, you can answer in centimeters or millimeters for this, and you just put your final answer down the bottom. As always, guys, with maths, I'm sure you've been told by your maths teachers, if even if you're not sure how to do it, just have a go, um, because you'll get marks for working out anyway. Okay, so that's how to do area.